King of glory, the Lord strong and mighty, the Lord mighty in battle, the almighty God who had never lost a war, we bless your name. We thank you for what you've done on this campus in the past. We thank you for what we're about to do this evening. Please accept our thanks in Jesus' name. On behalf of every one of your children here today, and all those who might be listening to us all over the world, please arise. Fight our battles for us. Scatter all our enemies. Let your light shine. And dismiss every force of darkness on this campus. My Lord and my Savior, I'm praying that everyone here today will receive a touch from you. It is written, he sent his word and he healed them and delivered them from all their disruptions. Even as your word will be going forth today, please heal the sick. Set the captives free. And Lord God Almighty, save souls tonight. And just put the devil to shame. And let your name be glorified. Father, I pray that everyone who had come to this ground today will go home singing a song of victory. Father, once again, we commit Obafemi Awolowo University into your hands. Take absolute control of this university. Prosper this university. Move this university from glory to glory. And Lord, bless our vice chancellor. Bless all the principal officers. Bless the academic staff. Bless the non-academic staff. And bless all the students. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Amen. Let someone shout hallelujah. Shake out with one or two people and say, good evening, God bless you. And then, you may please be seated. When it became evident that I would not be able to come to this campus in January, I thought we might be missing the whole year. But thank God the Almighty God spoke and said, November is still part of the year. So I thank God that I could be here today. Um, and I thank God you are able to be here today. I'm trusting the Almighty God that by the time we are all living, we'll be singing the song of victory. I've been asked to speak on my strong deliverer. Three words. The first one is my. And that means that whatever God is going to do here tonight is going to be done on an individual basis. He didn't say our strong deliverer, which means even though we are quite a crowd, it is possible that the Almighty God will attend to only one person. And uh, if you are that person that he will attend to, let me hear you shout hallelujah. And then he, the second word is strong. But strong is an adjective, so before you can understand what an adjective is doing, you need to know what the noun is. So we jump strong and go to deliverer. The deliverer is the one who rescues. The one who rescues you from someone. The moment we talk about deliverer, we are talking by implication that Someone has been captured, 
and is unable to set himself free. And so there's the need for someone to set him free. And then when we talk about strong, of course, we automatically imply that there, there is, could be someone who is weak. And it's because of the weakness that maybe is captured. Or it might be because of the weakness that is unable to set himself free. We will try, God helping us in the next 30 minutes or so, to look at this topic. As we go along, if we are so led by the Holy Spirit, we'll call upon you to stand up and pray. If I were you, I would pray very well tonight. Because I'm believing God that every bondage will be destroyed tonight in Jesus' name. Amen. Psalm 18 from verse 1 to 3. Psalm 18 from verse 1 to 3. It says, I will love thee, O Lord, my strength. The Lord is my rock and my fortress and my deliverer. My God, my strength, in whom I will trust, my buckler and the horn of my salvation and my high tower. I will call upon the Lord, who is worthy to be praised. So shall I be saved from my enemies. In the name that's above every other name, all your enemies will be put to shame today. Yeah. There is a deliverer. His name is the Lord of hosts. Psalm 24, verse 10. Psalm 24, verse 10 says, Who is the King of glory? And he said, The Lord of hosts is the King of glory. Now, Lord of hosts means the controller, the commander in chief of all the hosts. The hosts in heaven, the hosts on earth, the host underneath the earth is the controller of angels, is the controller of all hosts on the ground walking about, is the controller of all demons. He is the Lord of hosts. When we talk about strength, the Bible calls him in the same Psalm 24. From verse 7 to 8, Psalm 24, 7 to 8, he said, He is the Lord, strong and mighty, mighty in battle, which tells you straight away, He's not a civilian, He is a soldier, and He knows how to fight. How strong! Is this deliverer? Psalm 91, verse 1. Psalm 91, verse 1 tells us that he that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. He is not just mighty, he is almighty. In other words, his might is completely unlimited. How strong! You see, Isaiah 43, verse 13. Isaiah 43, verse 13. He says, there's no one strong enough to deliver from his own hand. So if he's the one who has captured someone, there is nobody anywhere that is strong enough to deliver from his hand. And then he says, if he wants to do something, if he wants to walk, nobody can hinder him. But then in Isaiah chapter 49, from verse 24 to 26, Isaiah 49, 24 to 26, he says he can deliver from anyone. No one can deliver from him, but he can deliver from anyone. 
He even went further to say that if the one holding you captive receives your being set free, he said he will feed that captor with his own flesh and cause him to drink his own blood. And I believe that's a word for someone straight away today. That every force that have been holding you captive, trying to hinder your progress, trying to hinder your joy, standing in the way of your success, if they won't let you go, they will pay with their own lives. Now, in Luke chapter 11, from verse 21 to 22, Luke 11, from verse 21 to 22, the Bible says, when a strong man, armed, keeps his house, then all his goods are safe. But when a stronger than he shall come upon him and overpower him and take away all the weapons in which he's trusting, then he can loot him completely. So the deliverer that we are talking about is the stronger one. Is the one who is stronger than the strongest. And I can assure you, in that name that's above every other name, that strength of his will be used for your deliverance today. Yeah. Now, when we talk about deliverance, captivity can come in various forms. There could be physical captives. For example, in Luke chapter 13, from verse 11 to 17, Luke 13, from verse 11 to 17, the Bible tells us of a woman who was bent double and had been like that for 18 years. No matter how hard she tried, she could not straighten up because the doctors could not help her because what was wrong with her was not just physical. There was a force bending her double. The Lord called it the spirit of infirmity. There are many sicknesses and diseases that you find that the best of doctors could not handle. Like I told uh, my brethren at the teaching hospital this morning, demons do not appear on x-ray. It doesn't matter how sophisticated your MRI machine may be, it's not going to record the presence of a demon. And when you cannot locate the point or the source of the problem, finding the solution becomes a problem. So when you hear that there is a sickness, that we don't know the cure, or they say there is a sickness that we can cure, but we can only manage, then you know immediately this is not a medical problem, it's a spiritual problem. And I'm praying today that if there's anyone here being troubled by any spirit of infirmity, you'll be set free today in Jesus' name. Yeah. Now, this deliverer is so strong that just one touch from him will set you free from any form of spirit of infirmity. In Matthew chapter 8, from verse 1 to 3, Matthew 8 from verse 1 to 3, we find the case of a leper. And leprosy in those days was incurable, just like AIDS and uh, some other terrible diseases that the doctors will tell you, well, we can manage this, but you have to take this drug for the rest of your life. And if there's anyone under that kind of situation today, I say the devil is a liar. Yeah. Because the almighty God will set you free tonight. Just one touch from the deliverer and the leper became cleansed. 
In Mark chapter 5, from verse 25 to 34, Mark 5, from 25 to 34, there was the case of a woman who had the issue of blood. The Bible said for 12 years, she went to the best of the physicians that were available, going from one physician to the other. But instead of getting better, she grew worse because her problem was not physical. But as soon as she managed to turn the aim of the garment of the great deliverer, miracle happened. And when you read Mark chapter 10, from verse 46 to 52, Mark 10, 46 to 52, you read about Bartimaeus. Bartimaeus didn't have eye problem. He had no eyes. He was born blind. There was nothing any human doctor could do for him. You can correct sites that are not properly uh, behaving. But what are you going to do when you are dealing with someone who was born blind? But there is someone who created everybody, who created you from the very beginning. And so if you missed something when you were coming into the world, it can give you a spare part. So if there's anything in your body today that the doctors have said, this one is already beyond repair. Before you leave here today, you will sing the song of victory. Yeah. I will give you just one example before I call on you to pray your first prayer. There was this woman, a very wealthy woman, and she just discovered that whatever she ate, she would vomit. She went to the best of doctors. They tried everything they do, they could. She just could not hold down any food. Finally, someone suggested that she should come to the headquarters of the Redeemed Christian Church of God because they believe God will perform a miracle for her when nothing else will help. And I mean, it's been all over the world. Spent all manners of money. And she came. And we have not even done any major thing at all. All I said was, let somebody shout hallelujah. <laughs> and as she opened her mouth to shout hallelujah, a worm came out of her mouth. And from that moment onward, she was whole. So maybe we should start by asking you to shout hallelujah. <laughs> and then since you are already standing, why don't you just talk to him and say, Father, every plant you have not planted in me, uproot it right now. Open your mouth, let him hear you. You are the great deliverer. Every plant you have not planted in me. Whatever I ate in my dream that had become a problem. Whatever the enemy had introduced into my system. Every plant you did not plant in me. Almighty God. Uproot it right now. Uproot it right now. Uproot it right now. Every plant you have not planted in my system, everything in my blood that you did not put there, everything in my bones, in my flesh, that does not originate from you, Almighty God, uproot it right now. Uproot it right now. Whatever name the, the medical doctors have called it, whether asthma or, or hypertension or this or that, everything that is not of God in my system, please uproot it right now. 
Operate it right now. Almighty God, please operate it right now. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. And so shall it be in Jesus' name. Please be seated. And then there could be those who are mentally captive. We're not talking about those who are mad. We're talking about those who mental capacity have been tampered with. Ephesians chapter 4 verse 18. Ephesians 4 verse 18 says, The understanding of some people could be darkened by forces of darkness. Uh, Isaiah chapter 6 verse 9 to 10. Isaiah 6 verse 9 to 10 says, Some people can hear without understanding. And among us students, that should be easy to understand. The lecturer will be doing his best teaching. Somehow you just could not understand. In 2 Corinthians chapter 4, from verse 3 to 4, 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 3 to 4, the Bible says the mind of people could be blinded by the devil. And you know what that one means? Because when, you, when, when somebody has been trying to explain something to you, and suddenly you, you got a point, you understand. You say, I see. You're not talking about physical eye now. You are talking about the eye of understanding. I have been in the academic world for quite a while before the Lord called me into ministry. And I know the pain of students who work hard, who study hard, and yet they get to the examination hall and fail. I know situations when a very good student can get into the examination hall and just blank out. I've seen it happen. It has happened to me before. In our own days, I don't know of now, Degrees are in categories. We have what they call general degree. In general degree, you take three subjects. Because at that time, graduates were very few. So they need somebody who will be a graduate, come to a grammar school and teach different subjects. If you are a better person, you are, you are more intelligent, then you do what they call combined honors. You could do physics and chemistry, or chemistry and biology, or physics and mathematics. Two subjects. If you are exceptionally brilliant in those days, you do what we call special honors. In other words, you take just one subject and focus on it. And nobody dabbles into mathematics unless you know yourself. I'm not saying it because I'm a mathematician, but you know it is the truth. And I, by the grace of God, I knew mathematics. I just knew it. It's just like as if it's a grace, something you, you know that you know. I mean, if I say two plus two, you know the answer, four. If I say what is the square root of two, you say... Two has square root. <laughs> and say, so what's this particular subject that I know? I, probably I was the best in that particular aspect of mathematics. And I got into the examination hall. And they will ask eight questions and ask you to answer any five. I read the first question, I couldn't understand it. I read the second, no idea. I read the third, no idea. By now, I was beginning to sweat. I, I read the fourth, I could not see head or tail, fifth, sixth, seventh, uh, eight.
And when I saw that, I just couldn't understand anything. I just felt, well, I will leave. After all, they will refer you in that one subject. You will come back and do it uh, in September. I was about to stand up when an invisible hand pressed me down. I didn't know God then, but I knew it was the Almighty. He will come to your aid today. So I sat down. For 15 minutes, I saw all my colleagues writing furiously. I couldn't write anything. But after 15 minutes, I read the first question again. Uh -uh. This is this theory. I read the second. Uh -uh. This is this formula. I read it all. Uh -uh. I answered all eight. And like a, you know, <laughs> like any child would do. I wrote at the top, mark any five. <laughs> but for one moment, I was blank. I know it was the great deliverer that came. I removed the veil from my brain. I want you to stand on your feet and say, Father, anything manipulating my brain, destroy right now. Destroy right now. Anything manipulating my brain, anything tampering with my understanding, almighty God, destroy right now. Destroy right now. Anything at all. Anything manipulating my brain. Tampering with my memory. Fussing around with my understanding. Father, destroy. 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 Please, Lord, anything tampering with my understanding, Lord God Almighty, deal with it. Deal with it. Deal with it, Lord. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. And so shall it be in Jesus' name. Please be seated. And then there could be those who are materially captive. In the book of Haggai, chapter 1, verse 6. Haggai, chapter 1, verse 6. The Bible tells us it is possible to earn wages into a bag of holes. In other words, you make money, but the money keeps on disappearing. In Haggai chapter 1, the same Haggai, chapter 1, verse 9, the Bible says it is possible to bring in your money and it be blown off. There are people who can tell you that at the end of the year, when they sit down and they calculate their income, they will look around and say, and what have I spent this money on? And I know, I know what this, I know what this one really means. Because before I met the Lord Jesus Christ, when I was a lecturer at the University of Lagos, because I came from the village, I was afraid to drive in Lagos because uh, 
the drivers there, they need deliverance. <laughs> so I had, a, I had a driver. At the beginning of the month, I will pay my driver. By the middle of the month, I will be borrowing from my driver to buy petrol. Because one way or the other, the money will just disappear before the middle of the month. Thank God the Lord saved my soul. And an end came to all that. There are forces that can make sure that what you are earning is not producing the results it's supposed to produce. But that is going to change from today. Because according to Revelation chapter 3, verse 7, oh, thank you, Father. The Lord said, There is someone here. He said, The doctor says, You have migraine. But he asked me to tell you, It is not migraine, it's certain hands squeezing your brain. He said, But the hands are already cut off now. In Revelation chapter 3, verse 7, the Bible talks about Jesus Christ as the one who has the key of David. And when he opens, no man can shut. When he shuts, no man can open. Today, he will shut the door against those who are taking away your money. Yeah. And he will open the door of blessings for you. Yeah. I mean, in 2 Kings chapter 4, from verse 1 to 7, 2 Kings 4, from verse 1 to 7, there was someone, a widow, of one of the sons of the prophets, who was heavily in debt. And the creditor said they want to sell her sons to recover their debt. But she cried to the one who can deliver from financial captivity. And within a day, the entire money she owed was paid off and she had enough money to live on for the rest of her life. One of my sons who was one of my partners, she wanted to lift up my hands but she hasn't got anything. Came to a partner meeting and I prayed a simple prayer. I said in the mighty name of Jesus Christ before I see you next time Every debt you are owing will be paid off. And he said, Amen. But in his testimony, he said, <laughs> I just said, Amen. I don't know how God will ever do it. Some days later, the bank chairman or whoever, the CEO, called him and said, Sir, how are you going to pay this your debt? <laughs> And my son said, sir, even if I'm paying you one million naira a day for the number of days that I've spent in this world, and it was over 50 years old, I can't finish paying. And you know it, and I know it. And the CEO looked at him and said, debt cancelled. Every one of you in financial captivity, you come out of it today. Yeah. Now, when God wants to deliver you from poverty, from financial captivity, he can use various methods. But for him, in my life, I won't be standing here. Because my parents were so poor. Poor people called them poor. Now that's, in mathematics, that's poverty squared. I gained admission to Elisha Grammar School. We were to pay a deposit of two pounds. That we were spending pounds in those days. They couldn't find two pounds. One way or the other, God provided. I got into the grammar school. After the first year, 
almost everything in the house was gone. By the time I managed to finish the second year, my mother went to see the principal and said, now, he had done two years. Could you just give him a testimony so he can go and teach? And the principal, for one reason or the other, said, ah, let him do one more year, just one more year. Because in those days, they have what they call the modern school. If he can do three years, and then we'll be able to give him not just a testimony, we'll give him something like a certificate. Ah, okay. My mother came home, told my father, and they sold everything, cocoa plantation, little things they had, they sold. I finished the third year. And my mother went back to the principal. Now he has done three years. Ah, the principal said, if he can do just one more year, <laughs> we will give him G4. There was something they call G4 in those days. Government certificate four means you have done four years in secondary school. My mother was angry. She left the place. But we got home. There's nothing to sell anymore. Everything is finished. But at that time, God brought somebody, native of my village, from London. And everybody went to meet him. I mean, if you return from London <laughs> in the 1950s, it's like if you return from heaven. <laughs> so while everybody was surrounding him, rejoicing, uh, I just turned in my direction. Hello, little boy. And then I, we began to talk. And he said, your English is very good. But I say, oh, yeah, um, I'm a student of the grammar school. What class are you now? And well, I'm supposed to go to Form 4, but uh, there's no money. He arranged for the fourth year. After the fourth year now, my mother went back to the principal and said, now he has done four years. And the man said, what kind of woman are you? Out of five years, we had already done four. You... <laughs> my mother started weeping. And I wept that day like I've never wept before. But one way or the other, I don't want to bore you with my details. I finished school sight. Because God was determined to bring my family out of the pit of poverty. I want you to stand on your feet and cry unto the almighty God and say, Father, you are no respecter of persons. If you can do it for one, you can do it for me. Take my family out of the pit of poverty. Open your mouth and cry to the almighty God. Oh, you are the great deliverer. If you can do it for one, you can do it for others. You are no respecter of persons. Take my family out of the pit of poverty. There are several things I would love to do for you, oh my God. It's just that I don't have the means. Help me. Bring me, bring my family out of the pit of poverty. Let poverty end in my family. Do it. You are my strong deliverer. You are my strong deliverer. Please come to the aid of my family. Come to the aid of my family. Please, Lord. Come to the aid of my family. Deliver us, Lord, from the bondage of poverty. Deliver us from the bondage of poverty. Please, Lord, deliver us from the bondage of poverty. Deliver us, Lord, from the bondage of poverty. Thank you, my Father. Thank you, Almighty God. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. And so shall it be in Jesus' name. 
please be seated. And then the, the big one now, that is spiritual captivity. When we talk about demons operating in the life of human beings, oh, they come in various categories. There is what is called oppression. And when somebody is oppressed, it's as if the fellow is carrying a heavy load that he can't put down. And the Bible says in Acts chapter 10, verse 38, Acts 10, ah, thank you, Father. The Lord said there's someone here who had a, a miracle and then lost it because he wasn't grateful. The Almighty God says, since that time you have been crying to him for mercy, ask me to tell you that today he will restore. That is, there's someone here that each time you are about to have a breakthrough, you have a dream in which you see a particular woman and the breakthrough will sleep. He asked me to tell you, you won't see that woman again. In Acts chapter 10, verse 38, the Bible says how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power, who went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil. Oppressed of the devil. For God was with him. Oppression means you're carrying a burden that is too big for you and you just can't put it down. Whatever load you are carrying that is too big for you, the Almighty God will take it off you today. But oppression actually means that the enemy is coming from outside to attack you. It's not as if the demon is already in you. The, the demon is from outside attacking. And almost invariably, the agent of the devil doing the attack is someone close. Someone who can reach through to you. I'll give just one example. You probably had the testimony before. We were having a program like this. And suddenly God spoke and said there is a lady here that your mother is the one preventing you from being married. That if she does not let you go, she will be buried in seven days. And I just delivered the message. The way I got it. The following day, one young lady, must be about uh, 30 something years old, or married, came with the mother, and the mother stormed into my office. Are you the one who said that I'm going to die? I said, How? I've never seen you. He said, You are the one, you are the kind of people teaching this young people, some funny things. I still didn't understand. He said, my daughter came home and said that you said, if I don't allow her to marry, I will die. I said, ah. so I look at the girl. I said, I mentioned your name? <laughs> <laughs> that one said, no, but I know it's me you are talking to. How do you know? So I said, mama, don't mind how. I didn't talk to her. I didn't mention your name. And I said, all that God said, or that there is someone. He said, is that all? I said, that's all. He said, okay. So he asked the daughter to go out. <laughs> and the daughter left my office. So he turned to me and said, Pastor, is it, is it true that, <laughs> that the one we are talking about with that is it's not you but what God said will come to pass. If the mother of the girl that God was talking to would not allow her to marry, 
she will die. He said, it's not that I don't want her to marry. It's that uh, she's the one taking care of me. Well, what will I do when she's married? I said, ah, mama. All you need to do is tell us we'll talk to his husband, I mean to our husband, and tell the husband we must take care of Mama. He said, You will do that? I said, I will. And she said, She can then marry. Six months later, the girl was married. If there is any force from outside standing in the way of your progress, standing in the way of your joy in the mighty name of Jesus Christ if they don't let you go they won't see the new year but then there are several other cases of demonic activity there is what we call depression I'm sure you heard the word depression before Many a times when they are talking about depression, they say the fellow is sad and so on. It's not just ordinary sadness. To depress means to push down. It means there are certain forces pushing the fellow down. When someone is depressed, when he's under depression, he will just become weak. He won't be able to pull himself together to do anything. Then we have what they call suppression. Suppression means the fellow is already down and the enemy is making sure he won't rise. Just keep it down. Keep down. And then there is what you call regression. Regression is that when the fellow tries to take one step forward, he goes two steps backward. Forces pushing back. Unseen forces pushing back. But the worst of all of them is what is called possession. Ah, that's when the enemy has taken over completely and is now dwelling inside the victim. <laughs> Just one example will do. In Mark chapter 5 from verse 2 to 20. Mark 5, 2 to 20. The Bible talks about that madman of Gadara. You had me talk about him all the time. He was possessed by, according to Bible scholars, 6,000 demons. They just took absolute possession of the fellow. And the goal, of course, is to destroy him. And to do so gently. But I have good news for anybody who might be under, whether it is oppression, depression, repression, Regression or possession. Every demon bows to the name of Jesus. Every one of them. Every one of them. Because it is written in Philippians chapter 2 from verse 9 to 11. Philippians 2, 9 to 11. At the name of Jesus, every knee must bow. Whether of things in heaven or things on earth or things underneath the earth. I feel like telling you several stories, but I will tell you just one that happened on this, your campus. A friend of mine, as a matter of fact, an in-law of mine, belonged to several courts. And then he got born again and decided, no, no more. I want now to serve Jesus Christ. I've tasted darkness. I've tasted light. Light is better. So he returned all their books because he was the secretary to many of them. <laughs> and one of the calls he belonged to is even in the town, not the small, small one in the campus, the real big one. So they called him. What do you say you are doing? Were you not told when you joined that you can leave? He said, ah, no, I've seen the light. And they said they gave him seven days to change his mind and come back. He said, I'm not coming back. I've decided 
to follow Jesus. And Jesus all the way. Fine. We will see wait seven days. Seven days passed. They went to the library to study. Came back at night. And entered into the room. In his room, there were three beds. One on the left, one on the right, and one across. His own was the one across, facing the door. And then he knelt down to pray. You know the kind of prayer you pray when you are tired. Lord, thank you for everything you've done today. See you tomorrow. <laughs> and he climbed on the bed down. Almost promptly, fell asleep. And then the Lord woke him up. Son, pray. Oh, maybe because I didn't pray long. Okay, Lord, I thank you. You are my savior. You are my uh, deliverer. Thank you for everything. Thank you that I know you now. See you tomorrow. And he fell asleep again. The third time the Lord woke him up. Son, pray. Okay. Whatever it is. You want me to do a video? I do it. As he knelt down to pray, I'm talking of what happened on this campus. As he knelt down to pray, all of a sudden, he saw something coming through the door. Huge. Black from top to bottom. There was no time to pray. But because he was already on his knees, there was enough time to shout a name. Let me hear you shout Jesus. Yeah. And if you are the one sleeping and you see that thing coming, even if you didn't want to shout before, you will shout, shout Jesus again. And when he shouted the name of Jesus, the thing stopped. That gave him a courage. And then he began to say, in the name of Jesus, I rebuke you. In the name of Jesus, I rebuke you. And as he was saying that, the thing began to go backwards. Until finally, he went out of the door. When he told me the story, I said, are you sure you didn't have a dream. Oh, he said I would have thought it was a dream. He said, but when I shouted Jesus, the boy who was lying on the bed on the left who rolled over in his sleep and his leg was hanging over the bed. He said, when that thing was going backwards, the hand of the thing touched the leg by the following morning, the leg was like a big log of wood. And that boy was out of the campus for a whole year. That thing was coming just to touch his head. But there is a name that is above every other name. I want you to stand on your feet. Lift your voice loud and clear. And call that name and say, Jesus. Jesus. Every evil force in my life, I rebuke now. Go ahead, rebuke them. Rebuke every evil force operating in any area of your life. force trying to attack me trying to attack my family I rebuke in the mighty name of Jesus every evil force planning to attack me now I'm your child I belong to you I rebuke every evil force I rebuke every demon in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. 
I rebuke every evil force. I rebuke every evil force. I rebuke every evil force. Thank you, Jesus. Every evil force, Lord, attacking my home, attacking my ministry, attacking me physically, materially, spiritually, I rebuke in the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus, I rebuke every evil force. Walking contrary to my destiny. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. And so shall it be in Jesus' name. Please be seated. Let me conclude. I can tell you stories upon stories of the power that is in the name of Jesus. How again and again and again he had delivered the captives. However, that name has no power in the mouth of someone who does not belong to Jesus. In Acts of the Apostles, chapter 19, you can read it from verse 11 to 17. Acts 19 from verse 11 to 17. The Bible tells us that God performed special miracles by the hand of Paul. So much so that from his body, handkerchiefs are taught. Just like handkerchiefs can drive out demons. He will send his handkerchief on errand, and demons will get out when they see his handkerchiefs coming. Then some seven sons of Scaphas, who are not Christians, were not born again. They had nothing to do with Jesus. They have, they've had Paul using the name. <clears throat> so they said, ah, we know the trick now. And so they saw a madman, full of demons, and went to him and said, in the name of Jesus, that Paul preaches. We command you, demon, get out. <laughs> and the devil answered and said, Jesus, I know. If he asks me to move, I will move. Paul, I know, is connected to Jesus. Jesus is backing him up. If he commands me to move, I will move. But who are you? Who are you? I'll tell you a story. And then we'll close. Some of you have heard it before. I was invited by the traditional ruler of one major town in Open State. He wanted to celebrate some beautiful things that God has done for him. The children returning from the United Kingdom qualified this miracle, that miracle. So he, he wanted to do a big Thanksgiving service. So he invited me to come and preach because he happened to be my son in the Lord. And so we got there, I had prepared my sermon, oh, that men should praise the Lord. But as we were getting ready for the service, his chiefs came to celebrate with him. But they were coming dressed in the regalia of their various secret societies. The usher saw them coming and ran to me and said, Sir, do you see those who are coming? I said, Yes. Are we going to allow them in the church? I said, ah, Of course. Put them on the front row. I was much younger then, I'm talking of uh, 1982 or so. So I didn't have the wisdom of age. As soon as I saw them representing Satan and myself, representing 
the Lord of hosts. I changed my sermon. I changed my sermon to what happened on Mount Carmel. The, con the contest between Elijah and the prophets of Baal. I preached a hot sermon. When I finished, I challenged all of them. I said, those of you who are, who are serving Satan. I came here with my wife and my son in my car. This is the number of the car. I want you to use all your powers to make one of my tires go flat. I said, if you can do that, I will join you and begin to worship your God. If you can't do that, you must surrender to my God. And then I made the altar call. And the first fellow to come forward was the leader of all the chiefs. And he was the head of all the secret societies. And <laughs> when the other chiefs saw their leader going forward, they followed. So we had a beautiful time. When we finished the service, the KBAC said to me, he said, EA, that's, that's what he calls me. Let's visit my high chief. Let's find out if he understood what to say. Maybe he thought you were asking people to come forward for healing. So we went to him. And Kabiesi said, Chief so so so, he said Kabiesi, eh, why did you go forward? Do you know what they asked you to do to surrender your life to Jesus and so on and so forth? Why did you do that? He said, ah, you see a small boy like this challenging all of us. Who does not know there is somebody behind him? He said, it is the one behind him I surrender to. And he was an old man, but he was approaching 90. The beauty of the story was that 30 days later, he died. All his life, he had served the devil. Just before too late, he gave his life to Jesus Christ. Instead of being a chief in hell, he's now a chief in heaven. I don't know who I'm talking to here tonight. You might be a chief among the courts. You might be a chief in the kingdom of the devil. But the almighty God has a plan for your life. And he wants to set you free tonight. So if you are here and you have not yet given your life to Jesus Christ, I'm going to count from 1 to 10. Before I say 10, I want you to come and stand before me here so that I can pray for your salvation so that my strong redeemer can become your redeemer also. I'm counting now. One. Let them come. Let them come. Remove the barrier, please. Don't wait for anyone. You might be the only one that the almighty God wants to set free. The choice is yours. If you like, you can stay on with the devil. You will discover that when he has finished using you, he will deal with you the way he dealt with uh, Goliath. He will abandon you at a critical moment. But if you come to my great redeemer, he will protect you from evil. His light will shine into your life and you will have a brand new beginning. Two, come now. He's calling you. This is your day. This is your day of freedom from forces of darkness. Your day of freedom from every form of captivity. Come. Three. Thank you. Those of you who are clapping, your hands will never be empty. Clap for them as they come. Clap for Jesus as they come. Four. Hurry up, hurry up, hurry up. This is your day. Don't miss this opportunity. The Lord wants to set you free. He wants to save your soul. And he wants to make you more than a conqueror. Five. Hurry up, hurry up, hurry up. Those of you who are still on the way. Yes, I can see you running, but keep coming, keep coming. Six. 
Keep clapping. Your hands will never wither. Just keep clapping for Jesus as they come. Hurry up, hurry up, hurry up. Seven. Thank you, Jesus. Keep coming, keep coming. Keep coming. This is your day. This is your day. This is your day. Eight. Hurry up, hurry up, hurry up. I see some of you see far away. Hurry up. This is your day. The Almighty God Himself wants to deliver you. He is the great deliverer. Keep coming. Keep coming. Keep coming. Nine. That's the last countdown. If you want to come, come now. Make sure you get here before we finish praying because we're about to pray now. Yes, keep coming. God bless you. Keep coming. Keep coming. Keep coming. Thank you, Lord. Now, those of you who are already in front and those of you on the way, cry to Jesus Christ. Tell him, please save my soul. Be my Lord. Be my Savior. And I will serve you from now on. I don't want to serve the devil anymore. I want to do your will from this moment onward. Let's talk to him. And cry unto him. He will save your soul. The Bible says those who call upon the Lord shall be saved. Now the rest of us, let's stretch our hands towards our new brothers and sisters and intercede for them. Pray that the one who saved your souls will save their own souls also. Let's intercede for them. And if anyone still wants to come, you are not late yet. You can come. Just make sure you get here before I finish praying. Hurry up, hurry up if you are on the way. The Lord is waiting for you. It doesn't matter how high up you are in the secret society. Just come to the Lord Jesus Christ. He will take care of you. He will take care of you. He's stronger than the strongest. And when light shines, darkness cannot overcome it. Come. Don't let the devil hold you in captivity any longer. Let this day be your day of deliverance. God bless you. You're welcome. Keep coming. Keep coming. Keep coming. I will wait 20 seconds more in case you want to come. Hurry up. Hurry up. Don't miss this opportunity because tomorrow might be too late. God bless you. God bless you, my brother. You are welcome. God bless you. God bless you. Keep coming. Keep coming. I wait a little longer. Don't let the devil hold you down. Tell him I'm going to my maker. The devil is not your maker. He has no control over your destiny unless you allow him. Come to the one who decided what your future will be like. Come and surrender to him. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. I can see you coming. God bless you. This is your day of deliverance. Come. God bless you. God bless you, sirs. God bless you, ma. Keep coming. Tell the devil to leave you alone. Tell him I'm going to Jesus Christ. I'm going to the light. I'm tired of darkness. God bless you, ma. Come quickly. Come quickly. God bless you, sir. You're welcome. If there's anyone still coming, just wave your hand so I can wait five seconds for you. Thank you, Jesus. Hurry up. Hurry up. Hurry up. This is your day. Your day of deliverance. Yes. God bless you. You're welcome. You're welcome. God bless you, sir. God bless you, sir. You're not late yet. Just keep coming. Keep coming. Get here before I finish praying. God bless you, sir. God bless you, sir. God bless you, sir. Keep coming. Keep coming. God bless you. Tear yourself free from the grip of Satan. Come. The Lord is waiting for you. Yes, sir. God bless you, sir. I can see you. Yes, ma. I will wait for you. 
Yes, ma. Keep coming. Keep coming. God bless you. God bless you. Keep coming. Anyone else still on the way? Come, come, come. The Lord is waiting for you. Come and cry unto him. Lord, have mercy on me. Save my soul. Save my soul today. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Savior, I just want to say thank you. Thank you for your word. And thank you for these people who have come forward to surrender to you. Please remember your promise that whosoever will come unto you, you will know why cast out. They've come to you now. Please receive them. Amen. Save their souls. Amen. Let your blood wash away their sins. Amen. Give them a brand new beginning. Amen. Receive them into the family of God. Amen. Write their names in the book of life. Amen. And Father, let your light shine into their lives. From now on, any time they call on you, answer them by fire. Amen. And don't let them backslide. Amen. Let them serve you for the rest of their lives. Amen. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. 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 Ah, those of you in front, let me hear you shout hallelujah. Mm -hmm. I rejoice with you because from now on, by the special grace of God, I'll be praying for you. So I'm going to need your names, your address, and your prayer request. The counselors will give you a card, which I want you to fill very quickly, and then return it to them. We'll wait a few minutes for you to finish before we pray uh, the closing prayer, which is going to affect every one of us. Congratulations. God bless you. Walked upon the sea, you raised the dead. You reign in majesty, mighty God. Everything returns. Someone here, he said. Uh, so Activity, my strong deliverer. Because tomorrow we we'll dis we'll discover um, how people get into captivity. We we'll discover what we must do never to be captured again, etc., etc. It will be just maybe thirty to forty minutes. That is at six that I will take the mic. So, if you want to come, you are welcome, and God will bless you. Now, in the meantime, I want you to stand on your feet. You've already prayed that the Lord of hosts should arise for you, and I believe he has already arisen for you. But it's not just that I want you to be free. I want you to become a terror to the devil. So I want you to lift your hands to the Almighty God. I'm going to pray that he will anoint your hands, that from now on when you lay hands on the sick, they will recover. And it will anoint your mouth. Yeah. That from now, when you command demons to flee, they will flee. Yeah. My Father, my God, I want to bless your holy name. I want to thank you for what you've already done tonight. Because I know deliverance is something spiritual. We, we might not see any sign yet, physically. But I know before tomorrow morning, there will be people here who will be singing. Father, accept our thanks in Jesus' name. Amen. Now I commit all this, your children, to your hands. Oh, thank you, Father. The Lord asked me to tell someone here, he said, you will never suffer another embarrassment. Amen. Ah, 
Thank you, Father. Daddy also says there's someone here, he said, you are extremely anxious about tomorrow. He asked me to tell you, your tomorrow will be all right. <laughs> Father, please anoint all these hands. Amen. When the lady's hands on the sick, let the sick recover. Amen. And every mouth that is saying amen now, Father, anoint them. Amen. Whenever they command demons to move, let demons move. Amen. The freedom you have given your children today, let it be permanent. And Lord God Almighty, very soon, let there be several testimonies. Coming as a result of this, your children. Healing the sick. Casting out demons. And performing miracles in your name. Do so much for them that very soon, when the devil sees them coming, the devil himself will run. Thank you, my Father and my God. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. 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 If you receive that, let me hear you shout hallelujah. Yeah, and if I want you, the first Lord. fellow to taste of the new anointing. Gap TV, RCC Dubai TV channel.